Hello everyone, welcome to MES eLearning channel. So, in this video, we will solve another type of problem on resultant of concurrent force system. So, this is a given problem. For this system shown in the figure, we have to determine two things. First one is the required value of alpha if resultant of three force is to be vertical. And the second sub question is and the corresponding magnitude of the resultant. So this is a given system. So to this systems we have to find out the resultant and we have to find out the alpha that is the angle. And they have given one important condition that if resultant of three forces is to be vertical. So that means that we can we can say that resultant is vertical resultant is vertical so we know that when resultant is vertical that means summation of f of y will be equal to r and summation of f of x will be equal to 0 so this is a condition for this given statement if resultant of three forces is to be vertical that means resultant is vertical that is summation of f of y will be equal to r or summation of and summation of f of x will be equal to 0 ok. Now if you see the system if you see the diagram so every force is an inclined force again if it is an inclined force we have to resolve these forces as well. So to do the resolution so what we can do is we can draw we can draw the components so for this first force that is 100 100 Newton so this is the angle alpha so this will be 100 cos alpha and this will be 100 sin alpha and now for this force that is a 30 degree force so we can have again two components so this one it is 150 sin of alpha plus 30 because this angle we don't know that is the reason we are having sin of alpha plus 30 the horizontal one will be equal to 150 cos of alpha plus 30 and this force this will be 200 cos alpha and this will be 200 sin alpha. So this is the resolved force. So we will try to draw the uh, equivalent uh, simple prop, simple this force, simple diagram. So this is the given. So from this force, we have three forces, 200 Newton. So we have one more, this is 100 Newton we have one more 150 Newton the angle is alpha this one is 30 this one is alpha ok so now for this force we have to find out the resultant or else we have to first find out the alpha so as we discussed so we have to we will have two components for this particular forces as well ok this already we have discussed with above so we can take this uh, conditions based upon this condition we can frame the equation so first summation of f of x will be equal to 0 ok so if f of x will be equal to 0 that means all the horizontal force so we have to consider all the horizontal force so here we have one horizontal force that is 100 if you see this sign it is moving from left to right so 100 cos of alpha ok and the second one is this one 150 so again it is moving left to right so this will be, will be a positive positive 150 cos 150 cos alpha plus 30 now this force that is 201 it is moving from right to left so negative sign 200 cos of alpha so this is the equation this is equal to 0 now if you look at this particular thing this problem this uh, this term 150 cos alpha plus 30 
So, this is in the formula of cos of A plus B. So, in our lower standards, we must have studied this formula cos of A plus B is nothing but cos A cos B minus sin A sin B. So, we have to write in this term, this particular term. So, if you write this, so this will be 100 cos alpha plus 150 cos alpha, cos A is nothing but alpha. Again, we have to cos alpha then cos 30, cos A cos B minus of sin A, sin A is alpha then sin B that is 30, then minus 200 cos alpha will be equal to 0. Okay. Now, if you see, so we have this cos 30, we can get the value. So, if we, if you, we can multiply this value, this cos 30 will be multiplied with this thing and again we can have this thing's value. So, if you do these things, if you calculate this thing, if you put it in the calculator, so we will have, we'll have 130 cos alpha <coughs> minus 75 sin alpha minus 100 cos alpha. This will be equal to 0. Again, you can take the all these uh, components common, that is a cos alpha and sin alpha. So, if you see, we have two cos alphas, right? So, 130 minus 100, this will be 30 cos alpha minus 75 sin alpha. So, this will be equal to 0. Again, we can uh, take this to the other side. So, 30 or else what we can do is we can keep it as like this. Anyways, so cos alpha will be equal to 75 sin alpha. So, if you want to make it into a tan theta, so what we can do is, so here, so we can have sin alpha divided by cos alpha, this will be equal to 30 by 75. Okay. So, this is nothing but tan alpha will be equal to 30 by 75 and if you have this uh, tan inverse, alpha will be equal to tan inverse of 30 by 75. So, we will get the value as alpha will be equal to 21.8 degree. So, this is the alpha value. So, we solved the first question, first sub question that is the required angle of alpha. So, we found out that alpha is equal to <coughs> 7, so, 21.8 degree. So, now we have to go for the second sub question which is the magnitude of the R to find out magnitude of resultant that is R. So, to find out this we can use another uh, equation that is summation of f of y will be equal to R. right? So, here we have to frame the f of y equation. So, I can write it like this as well. R will be equal to summation of f of y because we have to find R. So, I will just keep it on the left hand side. Now, we have to frame the equation for f of y. So, f of y is nothing but again all the vertical forces. So, if you see the vertical forces, this 100, okay, this is acting downwards. So, minus, it will become minus 100 sin alpha. We know the alpha value, we can put it that alpha value. Now, 150 again, this is also acting downwards. So, minus 150 sin alpha, sin 30 plus alpha, right? So, we know already know the alpha value that is 21.8. So, 21.8 plus 30, it will become 51.8 degree, this one. Again, here also we will have 21.8 degree. So, this, was, uh, this is also acting downward. So, everything is negative. Okay. So, so minus 100 sin alpha. So, sin alpha is nothing but 21.8 degree minus 150 sin of alpha plus 30, alpha is 21.8 plus 30. Now, again minus 200 sin alpha. Sin alpha is nothing but 21.8 degree. Right? So, if you solve this equation, so we will get R will be equal to minus 229.29 Newton. So, this is the resultant and we can write another term as well, R will be equal to 229.29 Newton, it is acting downward, the arrow also, also denotes it is a negative. So, this is the final value, so we found out the alpha and found out the resultant for this particular system. 
I hope you understood this uh, problem. So, here this is the last problem of the uh, series of resultant of concurrent force system. Okay. So, to conclude this uh, resultant concurrent force system, so we started with a concurrent force system is nothing but forces passing through the uh, single point. So, any forces okay. and uh, <coughs> to in this system you have to find out the resultant resultant R and we have to find out the direction that is theta as well. To find out resultant we have to have the summation of f of x. So, this summation of f of x, f of x is also can be equal to r of x as well and summation of f of y will be equal to r of y as well. So, to find out r, r is nothing but square root of summation of f of x square plus summation of f of y square and to find out the theta is equal to tan inverse of summation of f of y divided by summation of f of x. So, while calculating theta, the sign of f of y and f of x is not necessary, it should be positive only. Then after this, we have to place that resultant that is a position. So, this position is based upon the values of f of y and f of x. Based upon this, based upon this component, we can place the resultant where we can place the in the quadrant, okay. Whether it is the first quadrant, second quadrant or third quadrant. So, under this, we solved uh, various types of problems as well. First, they will be given forces. So, from the forces, we have to find out the resultant and we had some three conditions as well. If R is vertical, that means the vertical that means f of y is equal to R. If R is horizontal, that means f of x equal to R. So, in this f of x will be 0. So, in this f of y will be equal to 0. If resultant is 0, R is 0, that means f of x and f of y will be equal to 0. So, based upon this condition also we tried from some problems and we found out the other forces as well. So, this is the uh, conclusion of from the resultant of concurrent force system. So, I hope you enjoyed this series. Thank you guys. So, next lecture we start with resultant of parallel force system. Thank you.